Welcome to the LA Business Podcast, your destination to hear stories of how businesses grow and scale. I'm Robert Brill, CEO of BrillMedia.co and the host of this podcast. Now, let's jump right into this week's interview. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the LA Business Podcast. Today, our guest is Sifu Tommy Luke Bowling. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. You have quite a you have quite a repertoire of work that you you've done, and I want to do a brief introduction. You're a writer and author, world renowned martial artist, keynote speaker, instructor of military and police units. Tell us about everything that's going on with you, and uh, tell us about the Sifu. Tell us about everything. Just tell oh us. Oh my why. goodness! <laughs> All right, it's going to be a long interview. Yeah, uh, well, I'm <laughs> I am the martial arts guy. I've uh, practiced martial arts pretty much my whole life. Uh, I'm 44 years old, and I've uh, started. I started like 40 years ago. Um, I'm uh, I live in Germany, uh, but I run a multinational business. Uh, I teach the the um, martial art of Wing Chun. Some of you guys may be familiar with it. Uh, if you have heard about Bruce Lee, I'm pretty sure you've heard about uh, Wing Chun. It's a Chinese martial art. It's very direct, very effective, uh, quite brutal. Um, so it's an effective way of defending yourself, even if you are not extremely physically built or strongly built. And um, so I turned this into, I only have high school education, and uh, which gave me the chance to uh, be thrown into the cold waters uh, at the age of 18 and just uh, started um, trying to promote my school. But I had no idea how to do that. And um, so it, it took me a long, long time and uh, many conversations with many people and lots of testing and tweaking and stuff like that to find a way of how to um, how to actually turn this into a business that works. And uh, up until well, today, actually, I run 80 schools or my team runs 80 schools uh, in 15 countries. So um, outside of COVID, I'm usually uh, on an airplane quite, quite often uh, to uh, to a distant land in order to do some seminars. Um, so we have our schools, we have a martial arts schools, but we also do a lot of training with a variety of police units and military units. Uh, I'm a tutor at the uh, the police academy in Colombo, Sri Lanka, for example, where I go once a year and one of my uh, representatives goes there every week to to uh, teach the, um, the police trainers over there. Um, there are hostage rescue teams in Brazil that we teach, such as BOPE. Some of you guys may have uh, heard of them. And uh, so it's, it's quite it's quite interesting. And also how this actually, um, well, this actually. Let's, let's take a step back here for a moment because sure. there's a lot, 80, 80 branches in 15 countries. Yeah. Um, how did you get from having a high school education to running this international corporation? It, it seems like a lot of, I mean, I'm, I'm running a, a, sm a small team of 10 people here and it's a mm. ton of work. How do you do this across, across political borders and across countries and across different languages. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, it really just was myself. It was only me and my love for the martial arts. And uh, so for that, that's actually, that's the core of pretty much everything that I was doing. And um, Wing, the Wing Chun system is based on uh, four principles. Um, loosely translated, the first principle is, is the way clear go forward. So you learn how to be, um, how to be proactive and to go forward and not to look back and how to deal with, uh, with setbacks and stuff like that. Second one is, if you encounter resistance, stick. So obviously, first thing that happens if you don't have a clue about what you do is you run into an obstacle and you learn how to feel wh where that uh, obstacle is and also maybe how to feel if there's a gap somewhere and how you can use that gap for your advantage, which is where the third concept kicks in. And that's the concept of uh, if the opponent is too strong, yield. So um, you, 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 you look for intelligent ways of how to um, how to actually find a way to get your goal. And then finally, when the opponent retreats, follow him. So you go forward full throttle. So this is the only thing that I had in the beginning, just my passion for the martial arts and these few principles. And um, I was lucky to meet a number of people in, uh, in the United States and in the UK who were running some, uh, some successful martial arts businesses. And they were uh, kind enough to share their knowledge with me. And um, I just started with one school and then opened another one. And then I built, I slowly built up some assistance and was able to give the, uh, um, the one of the schools to them so that I could free myself to open yet another one. And um, so it kind of happened organically in the, in the beginning, but it took me a long time to, um, 
well, back in the time over here in Germany, there were not a lot of professionally run schools. So it was very hard for me to find mentors. So I always had to, um, you know, just hop across the pond in order to find somebody who uh, was able to actually give me some advice. And so it took me a long time to get um, some, some, um, some ideas of how I could actually scale this whole thing. I started uh, attending personal development seminars. Uh, Tony Robbins is, is one of the guys that I like very much. Um, and uh, dealing with these kind of things and uh, attending automobile university, as Zig Ziglar calls it, like driving your car, always having an audiobook running while you do that, that really helped me immensely. And I really started loving this phone over here with the, uh, with the recording option because every time I was there was something that I learned. I, I would just put it down in there and then make sure that I just tried it out. A lot of people, they know so much, they hear so much, but they don't implement it. And with me, it was the other way around. I hear something, I try it out. Most of the time I failed, but uh, at least I was able to see what worked and what didn't work. And that uh, gradually led to another school and then another school and yet another school. And since my love was always for the martial arts, which is something very well, very visual, we started using Facebook and uh, YouTube for our promotion. And that's when um, when people from other styles, from other Wing Chun families, other Wing Chun lineages and styles uh, saw my stuff and said, hey, it looks pretty interesting what you're doing. Would you be interested in doing a seminar over here in Brazil, in Sri Lanka, in the United States, in wherever? And uh, this is normally how it started. Um, you know, they, they either would come over here or I, they would invite me over to do a seminar in their school. And uh, then we would begin with a, with a cooperation, which was quite nice. Um, all of that being said, we were only a conglomerate of schools, but we were not really a business. So I really had to learn um, methods, how to really scale this whole thing and put it, uh, well, put some kind of corporate structure under it, if you will, to make sure that not just me, but also my students and, and future school owners will be able to live from what they do, you know, make a living from their martial arts school and, uh, well, be successful at that. So what what kind of timing are we looking at here? When when do like what year does your first are you first doing this in terms of like with the, with that with the school and mm -hmm. like what are the cadences that led it? What are the key points or the key milestones that you experienced and you're like okay wow there's some traction here, holy mm -hmm. cow this is doing better than I ever thought it would. Holy cow we're just going crazy right now. Let's, tell us about some of those milestones. I'm really interested in some of the. So I, I want to learn those milestones to me are fascinating because it's, I think it's really interesting that I can tell you from personal experience, recognizing when those milestones are happening are exhilarating and scary, completely scary. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, over here in Germany, it's like this. You attend high school, for example, and then you have the choice of either attending something that's called gymnasium, which is, uh, was it's like a... It's almost like a college, if you will. And then after this, you can choose to either go to university and then work in that field that you'd study there for a while, or you attend high school, then you graduate, and then you take a job. And this is usually, um, you usually take a job training, which takes anywhere between two years and three years until you actually get out in the marketplace. So um, I started the job training and I absolutely hated every second of it. I went home crying, re really hated it. And um, the first milestone for me was actually the day when I said, you know what? Um, I don't want to do this anymore. I know that there is a calling. There is something that I, I, I want to do. There's something that I should do. There's something that I have to do. And uh, I'm not going to be able to help people the way that I'm doing it right now. I would like to um, teach people how to be able to protect themselves and follow my passion. That was, that was, that was the two, there were, those were the two main components. I wanted to help people. And I knew that I was not going to be able to do that in the job that I was trapped in. And the second one was I wanted to be free and be able to, to do, um, well, to actually follow my passion. So the first milestone for me was like, oh, wow. Okay. So I'm actually free to do what I, what, what I want to do right now. So how do I make money right now? <laughs> um, the, so I was free. I did, I did have a lot of time, but I, did, I didn't have any money. So I started working as a bouncer for a number of years. And I uh, started, I did a, a bodyguard training and worked as a, as a bodyguard for a high a Buddhist priest and also a cardinal from the, uh, the papal council at the Vatican for a while, which was great, wonderful experience. Um, but um, I still had those money problems. And I started uh, working as, I don't know, I was a bartender. I, uh, I, was a, I was a waiter. I did a lot of things. 
and the money I put into my Wing Chun, into my martial arts training again. So the second milestone was when I was actually able to let any of these side jobs go and only focus on this. I was still not really able to make ends meet, but at least I had reached like a, um, a point where uh, the expenses didn't overbear what I, what I was making. So that was cool. And it gave me a little bit more freedom to breathe, so to speak. And then when I started uh, opening the next school and the next school and the next school, it wasn't really so much for me to, to know that I have a certain amount of money on my account, but it was like, oh, wow, look, this person that I'm teaching, he's actually able to make a living from that too. That's really cool. So maybe there's something for other people in here as well. And at the same time, I'm able to grow my business. So he could be a helper. So we would, I would, I would, uh, this, this was another milestone for me where I was like, okay, this is really cool. Um, not only am I able to do what, what I love and make a living from that, but somebody else is too. And uh, then a lot of these things were like, it's when you really focus on your work and you focus on what you love so much, uh, at least it's, that's, that's me. I don't really care too much about the money will come if if you if you do what you love and it is something that you do with passion then you normally do it good as well and you normally do it well if it's something that you really love and you just have so, the interest to keep doing it yeah you exactly. love what you're doing you're just going to eventually stop when times get difficult yeah that's true yeah and it, it keeps you motivated i don't really need somebody to kick me out of bed every morning i'm up at five and i'm here at uh, the office for my first workout at six six in the morning and i i just love that stuff and you're recording um, this podcast and it's eight o'clock Oh, look at that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's true. It's eight o'clock over here. But um, to me, I always wanted to be able to travel. I wanted to be able to experience new culture, meet new people, eat new food, <laughs> strange food. <laughs> and uh, when, when I looked back and I was like, wait a minute, do we actually have schools in 10 countries right now? And there's this other guy inquiring from that country and another one from that country. These were the things that how I measured success, not so much on the financial side, which is great, too. But uh, it, it was really on me being able to help more people get safe and confident and strong and stuff, even in another culture, even with a different religious background, even with a different language and stuff. That was something that, that keeps firing me up like crazy, even until today. So let's go, go ahead. right ahead. Sorry. Continue your thought. Okay. Um, so this, this is what, um, well, as far as my, my martial arts journey is concerned, this is what has always been firing me up. What was interesting though, was that this passion for martial arts took me into the, into the speaker sector, for example, when all of a sudden business networks like uh, being an I and other ones uh, started to invite me and they were like, Hey, you know what? We just heard that you only have high school education, but how do you manage to actually build a multinational uh, organization that way? There must be some underlying principles. Would you be interested in coming over and talk, talking about that? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So I started with a 10 minute speech. And then after the 10 minute speech, they were like, no, no, carry on, carry on. Very fascinating indeed. <laughs> and every time I spoke somewhere, other people came up to me. And uh, all of a sudden, people started offering me money for speaking about what I do. And then I developed a, a whole speech, a whole program. I um, uh, created an, um, uh, an audio book that I put out on Audible, German Audible, and uh, I'm writing a book at the moment. And so this thing just kept growing organically. Um, it's kind of difficult for me to say what those triggers were. It's just like every time I did something, other people came up to me and they were like, this is very interesting. Why don't you talk uh, about that on our podcast and at our uh, convention? I just spoke at NASA's uh, Ecosystem 2030 this uh, about three months ago. What do you and, talk about uh, with NASA? Like, what are the types of things you discuss with NASA? Well... Ecosystems 2030 um, defines the future as far as technology is concerned uh, in, in a variety of fields. So they bring in expert from different fields, also from the martial arts or from athletics, and they look at what is going to happen as far as technology is concerned in these fields. So um, when, I, when I spoke there, it was in the middle of the pandemic and people were scared shitless, obviously. So uh, it, was, uh, it was my job to talk about security and stability in times of change. There are 
three major pillars that I address when I when I do this uh, when I do this uh, seminar. Um, one of them is I know everybody talks about pivoting right now, but I think if, first of all, before before we think about pivoting something in our business, we have to make sure that we protect the things that are dear and important to us at the moment, uh, our core customers, our team, our finances and stuff like that. And once we have that secured, the second pillar kicks in and that is to pivot, to see what kind of things still work during this pandemic, while others that were normally our bread and butter uh, don't work at the moment. So what can we do right now? What are the things that still work? What are the things that don't work at the moment? What are the things that would work if we would give it a shot right now? And Heck, what are the things that wouldn't work even if we would put the, the time and work in there? I think this is something that most people don't ask. They just have this idea for a project and they think, hey, let's just go for it. But they don't do the math and they don't think, this, what are the odds of this actually succeeding? And then the third one is to actually set yourself up for uh, success after the pandemic, like embracing technology the way that we have it right now. And uh, I just, uh, like half an hour ago before this, this call, I just got off... Um, my Wing Chun masterclass. I teach people at the moment today, there were people from eight different countries uh, via Zoom in the martial arts, uh, which is something that I would never have seen doing myself at like uh, maybe two, three, four years ago. So embracing technology and embracing the internet and not being scared of it. Uh, this, These are, these are the, the things that I spoke about um, during the NASA event, for example. That's amazing. What I'm going to do, I'm just typing up a comment here, mm -hmm. not a comment, but a... Um... A question. Give me just a moment to get it on screen. I really want to focus in on what business owners should be doing right now to thrive. It seems like we're emerging out of a, out of a COVID fog. Yeah. Uh, for the last nine months, um, vaccines are rolling out as we're recording this across the world, which is incredibly good news. Yes. What? Tell us your your. What are you telling business owners? um regarding regarding covid regarding sustainability being successful i think we are in a very 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 unique spot when it comes to using the internet when it comes to using services like zoom and so on there is so much stuff that you can do right now you, even if you have no if you're not really a particularly uh, technology savvy what you can do, for example, there's YouTube, right? And there it offers you um, it offers you a number of tutorials for pretty much everything. If you want to learn how to build a website, you can do that now. You can do that there. If you go to Weebly.com, to Wix.com, or other uh, other um, uh, uh, websites. It's super, super easy, even for somebody who's not really tech savvy to uh, come up with a website. There are designing programs. There's Fiverr.com where you have experts of a variety of fields who give you pro professional services, uh, how to make a business card, how to create a website, how to create a leaflet, a flyer, how to do voiceover for you, how to create uh, an infomercial for you and stuff like that. So we live in a time where it's never been this easy and this cheap, this inexpensive to get help from professionals in these fields fields. So I've never been as busy. I've never been as creative ever, as I am right now. In the martial arts, you would think, hey, this is something that's hand to hand. You have to have your instructor right in front of you. And it could, this couldn't be further from the truth, but I, this was my conviction for the last 20 years. And now all of a sudden I find myself in front of Zoom conversing with, I don't know, 60, 70 people from different countries who are in front of a camera with their training partner while I'm in front of the camera with my training partner. And we teach them stuff using Zoom and I can see what they do and I can correct them. And uh, so so I think the, the main thing right now is make use of the technology that is there. Do not be afraid to take to ask for help on these platforms, to type in what you're interested in and you will get answers. And um, th this really goes for pretty much all niches. I'm, I'm in a mastermind class where we have people who uh, sell huge hammers, uh, um, sledgehammers that they use in quarries, for example. We have people who are coaches. We have people who are doctors. We have people who run ads ad, ad agencies. And these are things that pretty much go for everybody because everybody should have um, uh, their website to promote their business in the local, in the local community. And it's insane how many uh, local businesses don't even have uh, a website? They have never heard of search engine optimization and stuff like that. And I think it is very easy to hide from these things and how to be afraid of that, whereas embracing it would give us so much, would do us so much good. So what's interesting to me, there, there's, a, there's a few things. Number one, with regards to Zoom, I love it. Our business is fully work from home 
by design. So when this happened, it was like business as usual in terms of how we operate. Certainly clients and, and marketers were having challenges and in the live entertainment space and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting to me is like the psychology of people have has changed over the last nine months. Uh, think about telehealth, for example. I, I was listening to a podcast. I think the podcast I was listening to is called Pivot with um, Scott Galloway and uh, Kara Swisher. Great podcast, mm -hmm. by the way. And, you know, they're saying like, it, it's crazy that, you know, doctors can can knock out so many different telehealth calls, uh, meetings, appointments in a day, and it takes you 15, 20, 30 minutes rather than both the doctor and the patient taking two hours out of their, maybe the patient really, taking two hours out of your day to drive over, to wait in the waiting room, to come back, the whole thing. The whole work, like we can get so much done right now and it's so yeah. much more efficient. I think one of the biggest, and, and you totally touched on this, which is you can, you have the resources available to you. Now it's how do you package them in a way that really fits your personal culture and your DNA, your business's culture, and that serves your, your customers are, is a core, is a core method of, is a core idea of what you're saying really here, be resourceful, use what you have available to you. Like tell us a little bit more about the underlying, the core messages of what you're talking about in these master classes. <laughs> that's actually that's exactly what it is don't be afraid and be open to change be open to this what's what's coming it's not like we can't do anything about it it's there so we might as well make use to it to, to our advantage i think so uh yeah that's that's pretty much it i don't know if there's if there's a bottom line uh but what what it really is to me is be open be interested be excited and uh just go ahead and embrace the technology that is there right now and how long have you had this master class um running we just started. Today was our second session. We started three weeks ago. So I love <laughs> that. I love how you're able to like really go in and just be like, all right, I'm doing this because I have the skills and capabilities to do this. How long did it take you to prepare? Like when when was that initial seed of a thought? Like, okay, I'm gonna do a master class. Like what like when was that? And when did you actually start marketing and start running your first mar master class? How long did that take? Actually, I had the idea like four weeks ago and three weeks ago, a website was done. I was finished with this thing, ready to go. Then a week later, we had a professional video taken and then we had the first class. And today we have the second class. We do that other, every other every other week. <laughs> it's so fast. And that's what I mean. You know, it's 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 not rocket science. And you can even if you don't have uh, people on your team who can do these kind of things, go to Fiverr or some some website like that. And you will get this in a very, very, very uh, good good quality for not a lot of money. <laughs> I think, so do you, do you think that there are certain people or certain types of people who are predisposed to successes in this type of environment? And the reason I ask that is because everything that we're talking about right now, to me seems logical and obvious, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm experimenting with live streaming. This is my third live stream that I've done. It all started this week. And I just said one day I'm going to do it. However, there are there are business owners and there are entrepreneurs and there are challenges with just doing, yeah. right? The challenges with just doing are I don't know where to start. I get lost in the muck and the mire. Uh, the ad tech component or the marketing tech component is so dramatically challenging. How do you how do you frame up the opportunity and help those people who want have the desire to do it? but they get lost in the details. How do you help those people? I think first of all, it has a lot to do with if you actually grew up with technology or not. Mm -hmm. And that's nobody's fault. It just depends on when you were born and the kind of environment that you were that you were raised in. So uh, there's nobody's to blame when it comes to this. And I think it's completely normal for human beings to be uh, nervous about change and about things that we're not, we don't feel comfortable with. But if, what, what I like to do is I really like to weigh out my options and I'd like to um, do something that I call chunking. Um, when I speak, uh, what, that I call clustering. When I talk about clustering, what I mean is that I look at the projects that I'm interested in and let's say I have project number one here 
then I have um, the target group that I'm looking at, and then I have the distribution method. And then I play with this. Let's say my, my, my project that I'm interested in promoting right now would be self-defense. And um, the target group that I have would be people interested in self-defense or children interested in self-defense. And the distribution method would be Zoom. And I would not feel very comfortable using Zoom. Then I come up with another, with another cluster and then with another cluster where I only change one of these components here. For example, if the, the project would still be self-defense course, then maybe I don't feel uh, very comfortable teaching children. So I would change this to adults or to, to police officers or to bodyguards or to whatever. And here I may change this to um, uh, uh, in-person training, one-to-one uh, -one individual training, Zoom classes, uh, privates or, and stuff like that. Now, when you when you come up with a number of these clusters and you keep switching them around and around and around until you find something that you really feel at home with, then the last part that I do is I actually write the, the odds in here. Like, let's say if I teach children and I think that the odds are that it's 80% of probability that this leads to success, whatever you define success may be, then I'm going to go with this. This helps me to take away a lot of fear because it helps me fire myself up, if that makes any sense. So so one moment. So clustering target <laughs> audience distribution and what's the third circle? The product? The, uh, the, yeah, you have the project or the product, then you have the, the target audience and then you have the di distribution method. Yes. And you can change those around the whole time. So you could come up with 25 clusters with uh, the same project and you only change the distribution method, for example. Or, and then you come up with another 25 or 30 clusters where you change the um, uh, the offering. So it's not self-defense anymore, but maybe it's a, uh, it's a fitness class in my, ca in my case. Um, and... I use the method or the cluster that I feel the most comfortable with, which which gives me emotional juice. And the more emotional juice I have, the more motivated I am and the less scared I am of, of taking the first step. Because I think fear is pretty much the, the main reason why people don't jump into action. Yeah, a that's lot of really, so that's really interesting. So you're so you're really saying, look, I wanna I wanna put that on paper, everything that I think is relevant for this project. You're you have a a system or a template, a framework to in which to think about it, mm -hmm. and then you're like, okay, what do I feel? What 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 in my soul makes me feel the best? Which yes. method? That's great. As and long, so, as yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. As long as it's in your head, it's scary because you look at this huge mountain of things to do, and you're not sure if to go with number uh, with option number one or option number two or option number three. Which I understand that this scares people, but putting it onto paper, getting it out of your head, and putting it onto paper, that actually make it makes it feasible because you go, okay, you know what? I can cross out this option because it's not going to work. No, I can cross out this option because uh, I'm not uh, tech savvy enough. I can cross out this option because I don't think uh, these people are going to be interested in this kind of uh, project. And then you just really go with the thing that feels right and with the thing where you think that the odds are for you, that that this this that the probability is high that you can actually achieve your success that way. To me, it makes me feel at ease because I've taken the very the first step which is to really put it on paper and get it out of my head and and getting a clear um, a clear path, beginning a clear path. And another thing is that once you do this, I would recommend that you only do it for 90 days. So let's say you have, <laughs> let me write this down. Let's say you have three clusters and one of them has an 80% probability of success. One has a 30 and one has a 70 uh, probability. Then you go with the one that says 80% for only one quarter, only for 90 days. Another reason why a lot of people are scared is because they think, oh my goodness, if I put all my effort and all my money and all my work and all my time into this project, but if it's not the right kind of project, what am I going to do? And this may take away a little bit more fear because you only do this for 90 days. And after these 90 days, you will see, is it successful or is it not successful? If it is successful, you just carry on with it. If it's not, you just move on to the second most probable target. So if you have one that had 80%, another one that has 70% and one that had a 30% 30, 30 uh, probability of being uh, leading to success, you go with the 80 first, then with the 70 and then with the 30. Yeah. And uh, you only do it for 90 days. So that, because then you, you will have a clear picture. Where is this going? Is this actually leading anywhere? Or am, am I just, you know, uh, uh, treading water here? Maybe this helps. 
It absolutely does. Um, I like I liked how you call it chunking initially as well, because it, it may I think the big challenge also is when you don't have a time frame for success, mm -hmm. that also makes things unclear. Yes. I think I think um, I think what I know whatever it is, whether it's a diet, whether it's work, whether it's a project, whatever the thing is, if I know that I get to end it, I get to end it successfully or unsuccessfully 90 days, 90 days isn't that big of a deal. But if That's I think true. about, I think the challenge is some people think about this, like it's going to, I think, well, one, two things. Number one, I think some people think it's going to be the rest of their lives that they're going to be doing this and nothing lasts forever. No, no career does, no job, no project, none of that. But that's and, what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. And then secondly, and secondly, like as an entrepreneur, like I am sure your job, your role, the, the types of things that you do on a day to day basis changes dramatically when you look at the scope of years. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, oh absolutely. So I, I think the challenge is I think a lot of people who are employees who are making the jump to entrepreneurship are actually thinking, holy cow, I've spent my whole life, look, I have a job, and that job, any job that I get could be forever. It never is, it usually isn't, because that's the world we live in today. But there's this mindset of forever, like I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna do this, and that'll be it. But the reality is the world changes every 30, 60, 90 days, and we have to think in terms of the, that change. I think people don't think in terms of change enough, fundamentally. Yeah, that's true. But the cool thing about this, if you actually make this a habit working like this, it's actually also somebody, something for employees. If you want to do something on the side, you know, a lot of people think, oh, my goodness, I really want to be an entrepreneur. But do I really want to quit my day job? And therefore, I don't have time or I don't have the money. You don't have to do that. It's totally OK to start something on the side because you're only going to do it for a certain time, uh, for a certain uh, amount of hours per day and only for 90 days. And then you will see is the, the direction that this thing is going. Is it like this or is it more like this? Or is it even going down? And when you when you see that there is success, then um, you can still determine after these 90 days, will it be worth eventually um, uh, canceling the job that I'm currently in and going full full on entrepreneur or not. So who are the types of people, who are the core types of people that you're looking at in the in the masterclass? Who does it benefit the most? Well, it's, it's a Wing Chun masterclass. It is uh, particularly for people who are interested in self-defense. It's a self-defense masterclass, the one that I'm talking about right now. So those are usually adults. Those are usually people who have an interest in uh, being able to defend themselves and being uh, fit and 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 healthy. Um, yeah, it's pretty much what it is. If you don't have uh, interest in in the martial arts, then it it would be hard to uh, to be part of that group, obviously. So in terms of in terms of working with businesses and business owners, because you have, I mean, just a lot of you know. Your keynote speaker, you do a lot of things that that are helpful for businesses. If if a person okay. will connect with you, how do you how does that happen? Yeah, that's that's a different story. So there are these these two things, these two projects that I'm juggling. One is the uh, the martial arts thing, and the other one is the um, well business coach, if you will, and and a keynote speaker. Uh, I usually teach sales teams. I usually teach people who go outside and who have to be aggressive and uh, who have to stay motivated and have to go full throttle. Uh, these are the people that I usually work with. But also startups, people who are just beginning that journey and who are unsure how to take those first few steps. And is this really the right kind of thing. I mean, these simple exercises alone will give you so much clarity. And there are so many uh, techniques that you can use that makes it just so much easier to take these first steps. So usually sales teams and people who are looking to become entrepreneurs uh, with their startup, these are usually the people that I work with uh, as far as the corporate space is concerned. That's amazing. So so tell us about the last nine months um, for you. You created this uh, uh, Wing Chun Masterclass, um, you, where, how are you spending your time? The last nine months were very interesting for us. Um, we are right here in Germany at the moment. We're facing a second lockdown. And uh, so it's it's far from over over here. I'm, I'm really, um, well, we'll see what the what January will bring. But um, I sensed that something was going on. So when, uh, when the government called out the first lockdown, um, we already had a, an online academy going, which is um, uh, video streams uh, where people can just uh, t uh, download the videos and watch them. But 
but uh, from one day to the other, all of a sudden we had to close all the 25 schools that we have over here in Germany and we had to come up with a solution. So what we did within one day was to create a YouTube channel and I sent out a message to all of my school owners and told them, guys, I need all of you to provide me with 15 videos uh, in which you teach um, a couple of techniques and drills and uh, well, just just a class and then we uploaded that stuff on youtube and we were able to uh to throw out one video every day to our members we um we were super lucky we were super lucky that a lot of them um just it was under five percent that the people wanted their money back or that they uh that they contacted us and told us that they were being lay, laid off and therefore would not be able to pay their monthly dues but i think it's also part because we had those we had this youtube uh channel then we started doing live streams every tuesday every thursday for two hours well for three hours actually for children youth and for adults we have an instructor standing behind me you may be able to see the uh, the photo studio that we have here yeah. or film studio and we do those live streams there uh, throw it out today we just had 500 and something people join and actually train so you have moms uh, with their children holding pillows that they use as pads or you have uh, uh, a couple or brothers and sisters uh, working with each other which is amazing to me to see how they do it that was another thing started a self-defense master class for people who are generally interested in self-defense uh, you can view that on self-defense uh, masterclass.com i uh, started my wing chun masterclass wtmasterclass.com um, and i heavily increased my speeches online um, where I went uh, on well to to talk to um, the, the embodiment conference in England, for example, or you know just a variety of uh, of events that were taking place uh, online. I started. Um, to gather my instructors for brunches so i told them hey guys we're going to have school owner brunches so on that particular day i want you guys to get your uh, notepad and uh your breakfast and then just sit in front of the computer screen with us and we just talk about um uh, what's going on right now what we can do to make it better and so we can learn from each other so there's so much going on uh online related uh very interesting time for me right now <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the the Sifu uh, in your name. Tell us tell us where that originates. Uh, it, it just means teacher. It's a uh, um, well, it's a title that we use in the Chinese martial arts, particularly in kung fu, and it, it means father teacher. So it's somebody who's been teaching for quite a while. That's that's pretty much what it means. Awesome. And what does it look like? What does the world look like for you in twenty twenty one? What are you What are you going to focus on? I imagine it's a, the, the master class, um, but I mean. Where, where, what, what do you want to happen in 2021 for for you and your your businesses? Yeah, it really. I think it really comes down to if COVID is going to be around much longer or not. But um, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to fly again. Um, normally, every second week, I'm uh, I board a plane to uh, some kind some country to do my my seminars, and I thoroughly enjoy doing that. Spend a lot a lot of time in the U.S. I spend a lot of time over here in in Germany. We're at beautiful Heckhausen Castle in Solingen over here. It's really really nice. Um, so um, we're at a good place where it's okay to sit for eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen hours every every day and and work but i'm really looking forward to getting back on the road and uh, hopefully touching a lot of people both physically and mentally with uh, what we do <laughs> and as you think about you know as, as we wrap up and when you think about businesses and, and entrepreneurs moving into 2021 what are some words of wisdom that you can share with us uh, from the the accumulation of your knowledge the chinese martial arts how do we, what's a parting gift that you can share with us about how we should be thinking about business in 2021? I would just like to repeat those principles that I said in the beginning of the interview. And you may want to jot those down if you do have uh, a pen a pen and paper somewhere. The first one is, when if the way is clear, go forward. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. If you see that there's an opportunity that's presenting itself, then go for it. If it's something that's that's constructive, that's positive, that could be a chance for you to move ahead. That's the first one. The second one is if you encounter resistance, stick. Resistance sometimes is there for a reason. And the, the resistance could be a, a mistake that you make, could be something that happens to you that you have to learn from. But it's also something that 
that you should touch and that you should see what, what does it look like? How is it structured? And where are the gaps? First of all, what can I learn from it? And secondly, is there a way around it? Is there a way over it? Is there a way, a way under it? Is there a way around it? Tony Robbins likes to talk about the, uh, the ant strategy when he talks about an ant trying to get uh, around an obstacle and he says the ant keeps trying until, until it dies. And I kind of like the, this analogy. You're not supposed to die trying, but um, I think it helps to get up again and try it again. The third one is if the uh, resistance is too too strong, yield. It's not always smart to just go forward like crazy and uh, closing your eyes while you do this. Keep your eyes open and see if there may be other ways, other opportunities or other clusters. Maybe you just have to shift one component of what you're doing in order to get that success that you want. Maybe not everything is wrong, despite the fact that you are facing a strong wind right now. Maybe it's just one thing that you have to tweak in order to go to to get uh, to get to your goal. And then the fourth one, uh, with if the opponent retreats, follow. So when you when this gap uh, opens itself. Go forward and market, 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 and uh, make sure that you touch as many people as possible with your product or services. Sifu, Tommy, Luke, Bolig, writer and author, world-renowned martial artist, keynote speaker, and instructor of military and police units. Thank you. A lot going on. This is really cool. I appreciate this. We have your websites scrolling below. We have sifutommy.com wingsjun.com and wt-masterclass.com for anyone who's interested i definitely recommend you check them out fan freaking tacit this was great tommy thank you so much thank you so much for having me i wish everybody merry christmas happy holidays wonderful uh, new year 2021 <laughs> let, let that be the case oh yeah thanks guys <laughs>